This video is part one of a two-part series on creating your own log for net dashboard. We'll be saving logs to an SQL database and reading them using our web application. I'm going to start by creating a new web application. I'll select MVC with authentication. This will plumb up the boilerplate code with Entity Framework and Bootstrap. Once your solution is loaded, right-click on your web project and select Manage NuGet Packages. Search for log for net and this is the one that you want. Once Log4Net is installed, we'll create a model for our log messages. and We'll let Entity Framework create a Log4Net log table in our database. We'll be able to use this model to generate a controller and our partial views for pulling records from the database. So right-click on your Models folder and add a new class called Log.cs. Add the following properties. We want an ID, a date, level, logger, message, and exception properties. Now that we have our log class, open identitymodels.cs and add a new DB set property like this. Public DB set with the type log, and we'll name it logs. Now that we have that set up, we can create our database. Go to your Package Manager console and enter the following three commands. First, enable migrations. Next, type add migration initial, which will create our initial migration code. And finally, I'll run the migration code by typing update database. To make sure that your database was created, open your SQL Server Object Explorer and expand your local DB server and you're going to see a database with a name resembling your project's file name. If you expand that database, you'll see a folder called Tables. Expand that, and you'll see your project's tables, including your new logs table. Now that our project is equipped to manage our logs, let's open our web.config and define our log for net configuration settings so we can start logging. Inside the config section element, add a new section for log for net like this. Section name equals log for net with a type of log for net configuration section handler. Now I'm not going to make you watch me type all of this next part, so I'll paste it in. You can pause it and catch up if you like. We've added the log for net element block, which consists of two sections. The first section, as usual, is the appender section, which will contain our database connection string, our SQL command, and parameters which will define the attributes for the values we'll pass. Take note that our log.cs model is reflected in these parameters. The second section is the root section, which sets our logging level to all, to log all messages, and tells our logger which appender to use. We'll also add the following key to our app settings. We'll add key log4net.internal.debug and set the value to true. That does it for the configuration setting. Now let's move on to the home controller. Before I get started, I need to add log for net using statements. Then, at the class level, we'll add a constructor that creates our XML configurator and a class level variable that'll act as our logger when the class is instantiated. I'll paste the code in to save some time, but once again, feel free to pause and catch up. Finally, inside your index action result, we'll simply log a few different items using log.debug format, and we'll add a string. Build and run your project. Once your home page is displayed, you can go ahead and stop debugging. Your messages have already been logged. Let's take a look at our database to make sure. And we see we have our log stored. In the next video, we'll continue this tutorial by finishing our dashboard.